What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, TheWalk71, PlayStation 4, and I'm here with another wrestling review for you all. This time, it is a New Japan Pro Wrestling review. We have this year's Dominion 2019 at Osaka Joe Hall in Osaka, Japan, where all the Dominion shows are basically held. And, uh, yeah, okay, so before we get into the actual show, I watched half of this show live. Like, I actually stayed up at 2.30 Central Time. I stayed up, and I watched all the way until, what was it, the uh, tag team match. When the tag team match happened and um, uh, Evil and Sonata came out, I, I was knocked out. And when I woke up, it was like the uh, Ibushi Naito match. So I just said, I just turned my laptop off because I was falling asleep in my chair somehow because I was just tired. Out of nowhere, I just became real tired. And I also had a job interview at like 11 o'clock in the morning. So I uh, was trying to stay up for, I was trying to stay up to watch the show, but then also get like a couple hours of sleep and then do the job interview. That didn't even work. I was falling asleep in my chair just due to me being super tired. And I tried to watch it on my uh, MacBook while I was in the bed and I just fell asleep. So I just said... I turned it off and I just said I'll watch the rest of the show after the interview and whatnot. So, we got the show. The first match we got on the show was the Death Rider himself, formerly known as Dean Ambrose, the Death Rider, John Moxley versus Shota Yum Yumino. Now, I don't really know the guy's name. I just know that he's Red Shoe Son, the you know the main event referee. So I just always referred to him as Red Shoe Son. Uh, John Moxley, the Death Rider now, who recently won the IWGP US title against Juice Robinson a couple, a couple week, a couple days ago, I should say. Pretty good match between them two, actually. This is that was actually my favorite match of John Moxley, aka Dean Ambrose, in a long time, and my favorite match Juice Robinson ever. I think it's insane. But um, let me think. Uh, it was a very short match. It was like a three minute match. It was very short. Uh. Dean Ambrose is very aggressive, elbows to the face. He had a uh, a fish hook, and eventually he went for the uh, dirty deeds. But it has a new name. I think it's called the Death. R I don't even know. It's called the Death Something. But it was a quick three minute match. I think uh, Red Shoe Son got knocked out legitimately in this match, so the the match ended quickly. And then after the match, Dean Dean or John, I don't even know how it, it's gonna. All, I'm just. I'm still processing that he's now John Moxley, but Moxley uh, took the microphone and announced that he's going to be competing in the G1 Climax, so that should be great. G1 Climax is going to be lit this year. Then after that, he somehow managed to grab Red Shoe Son, who's a young lion, and just carried him to the back. And before we get to the next match, I got to talk about John Moxley's attire. His attire is nasty, yo. His attire is so disgusting. Like... He just got on, you know, just some shorts with barbed wire on one leg, like one side of his leg. He has like a wrestling shoes on and some knee pads. He just looks nasty. Like his theme song slaps. I really like his theme song, but his attire is bad. Like I thought he was just gonna wrestle in what he wore at a double or nothing and just wrestle in that. But no, he looks like a young lion, which is funny because he's facing a young lion. So we had a young lion opening the match, but it it was. I don't even know. I guess it was just a uh, the a match that happened. I guess they just want to get Moxley on the car last minute, so there you go. Uh, the next match we got was uh, Kojima. I'm not even going to say his first name, but you know Kojima. Versus Shingo Takagi, who just competed in the Best of the Super Junior Finals against Will Ospreay coming up short. And I heard there was a really great match between them two, and I still have, uh, I still have to watch it because I didn't get a chance to watch it. The only thing I watched at the... Best of the Super Junior uh, finale was Moxley versus Robinson because I want to see how he would wrestle post WWE. But uh, this match was a match where they just let people know that Shingo is uh is there. Like it was a slow match, very slow, but it was hard hitting. Both men trading off powerful chest chops, uh, clotheslines. It was just a very brutal match with uh, Shingo eventually hitting. Uh, a big lariat towards the end and hit the, uh, what was it? The last of the dragon hits and, uh, oh, it was just called last of the dragon. I'm not very familiar with Shingo. Um, 
in New Japan. Like I know he's part of Lij because he was a, a last minute replacement after uh, my guy Takahashi got hurt and like neck he broke his neck and now he's just like disappeared. So Shingo like I won't say take his place, but they added him uh, to Lij so he can compete in the uh, junior tag tournament that happened last year. Was it last year? I think late last year, I believe. Or, yeah, late last year. So, he took his spot. Uh, not even his spot. They just added him in there. So, it was a good match. It was a good showcase for Taka- for Shingo. Uh, it was just showing off, you know, what he can do. Then after that, he also made an announcement that he's going to be in the, the G1 Climax this year. The next match we got was your basic tag match. It was Jushin Thunder Lager and uh, Yoshihashi versus Minoru Suzuki Zack Sabre Jr. This match was more or less just a tag team match that happened. It was nothing special. Uh, there, I say the highlight of the match was Suzuki and Sabre Jr. both doing um, uh, octopuses, the octopus lock at the same time in the middle of the ring. But it ended up with Yoshihashi hitting a uh, roll up on uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Then after that, I think he's indicating that he's going to go after Jr.'s. Um, Rev Pro title, and he held it up, talking stuff, and then dropped the title, whatever. So after that, we got another tag match, a six-man tag match. We got Hiroshi Tanahashi, the ace, Juice Robinson, Ryo Soku, Ryo, Taguchi. I'm not even going to say his first name. You know Taguchi. Jay White, Chase Owens, and Taji Ishimori of the Bullet Club. Another, just another, you know, run-of-the-mill tag match. You know, it, it's a match that happened. Um... Nothing really crazy happened in this match. Uh, Jay White has a beard. That's probably the highlight of this match. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, Tanahashi ended up winning with... It was supposed to be a dragon swing, but it looked terrible. It looked very botched. Uh, I think it was botched on Chase Owens' part, but it is what it is. Uh, and I think Ta- Tanahashi's uh, arm is messed up again. He just stayed getting hurt. I think he's hurt again. Yeah, it was just one of those run-the-mill, you know, get the time going type of tag team match, just like the previous tag team match. It was just some on the card to get people on, whatever. Next match we got was the Never Open With Championship, as we had the champion, Taichi, who I cannot fucking stand, go against Tomorrow Ishii, the GOAT, the Stone Pitbull, one of the most hard-hitting SOBs in New Japan, in my opinion. And for this to be an Ishii match, he got dominated. And that's crazy because Ishii never gets dominated in a match. And especially Taichi. This might have been Taichi's best match for me. He was dominating with all types of kicks, uh, chest slaps, like all types of stuff. It was, he even got rest hold spots on T- Ishii. Like Ishii like got a little bit of offense, but whenever he did something, it was just met with more offense from uh, Taichi. When we get towards the end of the match, Ishii gets out of the rest hold. They trade a flurry of offense before Ishii hits the uh, brain buster and uh, wins the match. Uh, it was just, you know, um, it was it was a good match for uh, Taichi. It shows, I guess, that he can go. But Ishii, he just got dominated the majority of the match. And then the title changed hand again. You know, this is New Japan's U.S. title, I guess you could say. Hold on, give me one second. My bad. This is a uh, New Japan. This is New Japan's U.S. title, so this is like one of their most meaningless titles. Um, and the title changed hand once again. I could have sworn. Uh, what is his name? What's the guy's name? I'll just call him Matanza. Jeff Cobb. He just won the title at the G1 show, like back in April. Then apparently he lost to Taichi, and now Ishii's the champion. Then eventually, uh, Hiroku Goto is gonna somehow win the title back, and the cycle just continue to repeat itself. So after that. Got an IWGP Tag Team Championship match. We had the champions, the Gorillas of Destiny, G.O.D., Tamatanga, Tamaloa with Jado versus Evil and Sonata of L.I.J. Good tag team match. I actually enjoyed this match. Sonata is over, man. Like, that man is popping right now. Like, he is really... He's got the crowd at his fingertips right now. Like, at the beginning, him and um, Tamatanga had like a... a a show off of taunts and the crowd just went crazy. So we get to the match itself and it was mainly G.O.D. dominating at the beginning before um, dominating Evil. Before Evil eventually tagged in Sonata and Sonata got in the hot tag. Dived onto Tamatanga. Dived onto Jado. Uh, then Tama Lo- Tonga Loa just got a bunch of offense done onto him. 
Um, and then eventually it led to Jado getting involved with the Kindle stick. He was about to strike uh, Sonata with the cha- with the with the championship. Sonata with the Kindle stick before Bushi comes out. Miss Jado hits a dive onto Jado, and then Tamatanga hits a roll up and wins the match. Boom. After that, we got a special appearance from the GOAT, Shibata. He appears and introduces Kenta, formerly known as Hideo Itami. And Kenta shows up and lets people know that he's going to be in the G1 Climax Tournament as well. So that's three people who have announced that they're going to be in the G1 uh, Tournament. John Moxley, Shingo, and now Kenta, who I thought was just going to go back to uh, Pro Wrestling Noah, but instead is in New Japan, which I think is a smart move because New Japan is really taking off in Japan right now and I feel like if you want to go from WWE you should go straight to New Japan I didn't ever think that uh, Kenta was going to go to AEW I never that thought never even crossed my mind because I don't think they would know what to do with him I feel like he would just be in the same position I, I wouldn't even say the same position I just felt like he would just be there and he'd just be I don't know I just don't feel like AEW would know what to do with him, but I feel like if he goes to his native home in Japan and he's really missed being home, he's been homesick. So I guess it's great that he's in New Japan. He can live in Japan with his family and he can do all types of stuff in his hometown. So I think, uh, you know, that's, that was one. I think, I believe that was one of the reasons why he left WWE, other than, you know, the typical creative frustrations. But I think it was also because, like, he just wants to be home. So that's cool. After that, we have the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. Dragon Lee defending against the winner of this year's uh, Best of the Super Junior, Will Ospreay. It was a good match. I enjoyed this match. This might be my match of the night. It was like very fast paced. I never got bored of the match. My eyes never left the screen. Uh, it was counters after counters between these two. But I say... What really picked up was when um, Dragon Lee went for a suicide dive. And he actually put the suicide and suicide dive as he dived so intense head first that he hit Will Ospreay. And they both went over the announce table. And they just died for a quick second. Get back into the ring. Both men just really just um, countered each other's stuff. And it just built the intensity of the match itself. It was really... It tends, it was like watching two superheroes go at it. Uh, with the ending of the match um, approaching, Will Ospreay just was very resilient. He hit a, a flurry of offense, the super kick, the back elbow, the, uh, what does he call it? The os cutter, which is basically he just does a um, springboard cutter, RKO, whatever you want to call it. And then eventually hitting the Stormbreaker and wins the junior heavyweight title once again really good match uh dragon lee did a lot of good stuff too but i would say this is for osprey to really um this is a, this is i think new japan is um really investing in osprey this uh right now i think they are investing heavy into osprey right now for the junior heavyweight division after the match, Osprey went to the commentators and challenged Robbie Eagles, who is a part of Bullet Club, at their Southern Showdown show. Not Super Showdown. Oh, we don't want to relive that. Southern Showdown in Melbourne, Australia, so they'll have their match. After that, we had another match. Cody Bushi defending the IWGP Intercontinental Championship against the previous champion, Tetsuya Naito, in a very good match. 20-something minute match. Very good. I have to say this, it was it was scary at one point because there was a spot in the match where Naito decided to do a German suplex off the apron, but it just didn't end, it didn't execute well because Ibushi got suplexed, but his neck, like you have to see the video yourself. It's somewhere, it's on Instagram, it's on Twitter, you'll see it somewhere. I'm not putting it on here because I don't want this video to get taken down. But his neck just slammed into the uh ring apron it almost looked like he cracked his neck and we all know um ibushi has like neck issues so that wasn't really good uh then after that the match just picked up from there uh the match picked up from there it was just moves after moves like i um how do i like okay so 
after that happened, really, it just turned into Ibushi doing stuff after getting into the ring, beating the 20 count. Uh, hit a, a Golden Star powerbomb for a near fall. Naito even hit a Destino for a near fall. And then he had a, 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 DD, a reverse DDT off the top rope for a near fall. Then eventually, uh, Kota Ibushi tried to go for a, a, another uh, powerbomb before it got reversed. Naito hits a reverse... Um, her Karana, and then hits the uh, Destino again and wins the match. Good match, very intense. I would have to say the highlight, unfortunately, of this match is going to be uh, the German suplex spot where Kota Ibushi almost breaks his neck. Good match, though. I, I thought it was good. Naito, once again, is IWGP IC champion. After the match, he decides to put his foot on Kota, on Kota Ibushi's head and does the Destino pose, and we get that. After that, we get the main event Kazushka Okada, the IWGP heavyweight champion, defending against Chris Jericho. Now, Chris Jericho somehow managed. Uh, <laughs> Chris Jericho somehow manages to copyright his own music in his own match because when you watch the actual show, you didn't even get the Judas theme song. It was just some generic rock music. The match itself was a different paced match. It wasn't your typical Okada match. It was more of Chris Jericho really dominating. Chris Jericho dominated a lot in this match. Uh, when Okada did something, Jericho just kept dominating. It was more or less Jericho dominating Okada, and Okada barely survived. I think that's what they were trying to show in this match, which will probably set up for another match between Okada and Jericho. Uh, after that, Jericho dominated you know middle fingers to the crowd you know typical jericho new japan stuff that we've been used to now okada tried to go for his dive from the barricade to the outside that didn't work jericho caught him with the code breaker there was also another spot where jericho did a ddt on the announce table to okada and like i said it was just a lot of uh dominance from jericho okada did stuff you know he did the tombstone didn't go for the pin because he tried to set up for the rainmaker before jericho got out of it Countless drop kicks. Okada hit the elbow. Uh, and then we get to the end of the match where Jericho had Okada in a lion tamer. Okada got out of it. Uh, he got out of it somehow. Uh, and then there was an exposed turnbuckle. Jericho tried to go for the uh, Judas effect. You know, his spinning back elbow before um, Okada uh, gets out of it. Tries to go for a code breaker. Okada catches him. And somehow gets him into a uh, pinfall predicament and won the match that way. He didn't win with the uh, Rainmaker, which almost guarantees that Okada wants a rematch with Jericho so that he can beat Jericho with the Rainmaker. After that, Jericho attacks Okada, beats him up with a chair, cracks Okada in the face with the uh, Judas effect, uh, takes him out in the apron, and he was about to put Okada through the table before Hiroshi Tanahashi, who's on commentary, Attacks Jericho before Jericho escapes, insults uh, Japan, calls it Japan a bullshit company, and calls Okada a bitch. It was it was it was funny, and that almost guarantees that we're gonna get the Tanahashi and Jericho match sometime down the road because Jericho has said that I guess you would say his list, his quote unquote, no pun intended, his list of opponents in New Japan. He wanted Omega, he got him. He faced Evil, he faced uh uh. Naito twice and then he said he wanted Okada and Tanahashi he got Okada pretty sure we're gonna get another Okada match and he got uh Tanahashi was another match and now I guess this sets up for the match with Tanahashi I don't know which show we're gonna get this on it I don't think it's gonna be on the next American show because the next New Japan American show is the G1 Climax I know for sure Jericho is not competing in uh, the G1 Climax but one can hope uh, other than that, though, that's uh, Dominion. Uh, it was, overall, it was a good show. I felt like the hype of the show wasn't as strong as last year's Dominion show because the main event for last year's Dominion show was something that was built for pretty much a year and a half, and this match was just randomly announced, and we got it. But the show was enjoyable for the most part. I have to say my favorite match was the junior heavyweight title match between Osprey and uh, Dragon Lee. The Okada and Jericho match wasn't bad. It was just like not your typical Okada match. So you just have to watch Jericho dominate Okada a lot. But it, it was cool. Um, Better than Super Showdown for sure. <laughs>
Jesus Christ. But uh, yeah, you know what to do. Like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Do what you do to support me. Follow me on all my social media links down in the description below. Anyway, guys, I'm out. Peace.